Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking about some furniture pieces that we have moved on from. At this point, we can let them go. I know the title says they're hideous and that's because they're hideous. We have got some things to talk about and the first thing is actually that old TV armoire. I see it in the corner. I see it there, okay? Maybe I don't actually see it, but I know it's creeping there somewhere. And at this point, we can let it go because we don't have those big bulky TVs anymore. And this piece is just taking up some much needed space. If you have a flat screen television and you have one of these in a corner somewhere, ask yourself if it's being used. Does it serve a real purpose? Maybe it's an actual clothing armoire and you've converted it to use it that way or whatever. I think that's fantastic. I love it. It's great. But if you're not using it, we can leave it for the furniture flippers. Let them have it. They've got a business to run and we can get rid of these things, free up some floor space. And also, so these are kind of big and bulky and removing it from the space may even allow more light and a more open feeling. Now, obviously, if something is really good quality, if it's historic, if it's, well, not historic because we're talking about TV armoires, so that's not the point. If something is really great quality, a rare exotic wood, something interesting, beautiful, unique, elegant, like me, you wanna keep that around because it's actually a really nice piece and it probably has some value that it could be sold or repurposed in your home for something really great. These armoires are being repurposed into all sorts of things. Like I said, you could put one in a child's bedroom, put a, a clothing rack in it and boom, there you go. It's a great armoire for clothing. You could convert this into a coffee bar or an artwork station. You could turn it into a baking cabinet, all sorts of things. So definitely be on the lookout for these if you're looking to add some of that storage in your space, but they need to be converted from being used for televisions into something else. At this point, I think we can let it go because we don't have those big bulky televisions anymore. Actually, on a side note, how many times in like a real estate listing do you see a house that has that weird drywall niche where there should be a fireplace? It's for a TV that we don't have anymore. So be very careful about building in electronics into your home because as technology advances, they tend to change and then you end up with some really awkward niche of space that nothing fits into. Oh, let's talk about something that we are at the point we can let go of and that is floral upholstered seating. And I know it's giving you like that 70s flashback, that's exactly what I'm talking about, but modern floral upholstered seating that you're seeing at these kind of like home decor stores, the quality is just not there. It honestly just looks cheap. And at this point, it doesn't look good. It's not elevating, it's not enhancing the space, and it doesn't look expensive. Not that everything has to look expensive or be expensive, but it should at least look like it's good quality, right? So it's time we can move past them. We can let them go. Or if something is really good quality, you can have it reupholstered. Like some of those sofas from the 70s. You know what I'm talking about, the ones from the 70s with the marigold background and the flower print. No, we can let it go, but actually, Build quality of furniture in the 1970s was pretty good. So if that piece actually is a good quality piece, if it's comfortable, if you like it, actually if you like the lines of it, it could be a good piece to have reupholstered because you don't wanna just throw away something good quality because you don't like the fabric on it. And at a certain point, everything kinda of needs to be refreshed, reupholstered to just revitalize it. So those are good pieces to look out for or if you have to redo, but the floral, seating and honestly this extends even to like modern damask upholstered pieces like you can let them go or we can move past it because they don't look good or like luxurious in a space. They tend to look a little bit immature and unsophisticated. We can just let them go. We can move on from it and we can embrace something really beautiful like a gorgeous natural fiber textile upholstered piece. Okay that's great that's beautiful and lovely. You could get something in leather, not pleather, leather, you know, really nice, a uh, good piece. You put a little bit of money into something like that because you want a piece that's going to last you a long time, just like that 70s sofa, and that down the road can be reupholstered. So we can let them go because honestly, they're just giving us bad vibes and we don't need that in our life. Let's talk about the next thing we have to discuss, which is a patterned lampshade. Now, if you have a grand millennial style, 
the, a pattern lampshade, a you know, beautiful fabric can actually work. And the same thing with the floral sofa. Like you can make it work if you have that like English country, grand millennial cottage kind of style, but it doesn't usually work in every instance. The same thing goes for a pattern lampshade. Now, if you're getting a really amazing fabric and you're, you know, pleating it and you're doing something great with a little trim detail, cute, love it, fantastic. It's a, it's the vibe. But what isn't the vibe are the pattern lampshades that look like they came from the dorm room department at a big box store. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a lamp with a lampshade that matches a little storage ottoman and basket and there's a bedding set and a throw pillow, but the throw pillow is probably sold out. So now that all that's left are the other pieces, oh, I can't do it. I don't love those things because the quality doesn't tend to be there. You know, it's for a dorm room. It's only made to last for a few years because once you move out of the dorm, you just get rid of all the stuff and you move on into your adult life. So steer clear of the low quality dorm furniture and these lampshades are giving me that. And I personally, am just a fan of like a normal lampshade. It doesn't have to be anything groundbreaking, doesn't have to be anything revolutionary. If you like a more modern or minimal styled lampshade, look for something that has pleating, that has an interesting material. Maybe it's some sort of woven basket style shade. These are great. They're very, very chic. But if you have a really traditional style lamp, like some of the ones in these photos, a simple white lampshade, a linen, white lampshade. Great, simple, easy. We're not reinventing the wheel here. Those also just look elevated. They look easy to take in because it's not another pattern thrown into the space. So be mindful of these pattern lampshades. They just don't look good. They kind of look ugly. I'm sure they throw light in a really interesting way, but if you like the lamp base, I say go for it and get a new lampshade. You don't need the, the pattern lampshade. It honestly looks like it came out of a dorm room. It looks like it's a part of a set and it doesn't look luxurious. It's not elevating or adding anything to the space. It, well, it's adding something, but nothing we want. Oh, you know what I do not like I've mentioned before. I will mention again because I am accurate and correct in all things, but this is something that really gets under my skin and that is a shag rug. Now, shag wall-to-wall -wall carpet when it was originally sold came with a rake. Why are you buying an area rug that needs to be raked? Makes no sense to me. Way too much work. Plus shag tends to get a matted look over time. Like leave the polar bears alone, honey. Okay, this doesn't even look like a real fur rug, but it looks disgusting. It looks matted. It doesn't need to be in your home. They just don't wear well. And that's my problem with the shag rug because area rugs in general are not inexpensive. They cost a lot, but you want to get a good life out of them. And this is just not giving it to you. I would say the same thing goes for those kind of like shaggy wool rugs. I know that they bring a lot of great texture into a space, but the longevity, the durability, the wear and tear, they often shed. It's just not there for me. You know, some of these rugs like this one here, we can't even talk about this photo right now. Actually, we will because the rug is a shag rug, which I don't like. The rug is too small. And then I want you to take a look here at the sofa. What is that? What am I seeing? Yes, those pillows are on their corner. <sighs> ah! I mean, I can't even go into everything about this space, but the shag rug, we can just let it go. It's not giving what we need. There's nothing wrong with having a normal rug that's something just a cut pile. You could go really luxurious and do a hand knotted wool rug. I have a silk rug in my living room that I a door, but there's nothing wrong with a synthetic in that case also, because it's all about the durability, the maintenance, the wear and tear. I'm not brushing a rug. I'm not raking a rug. I'm not getting on my hands and knees to clean it or get things out of it. It's just so much work. These don't tend to wear well. I say steer clear of them. And if you have it, once it starts to show that wear and tear, let it go. It's, it's for the dumpster, that one. Okay, be mindful of what you're bringing into your space and the durability of it. I'm always telling you that. Yes, yeah, some things are gonna get dated and over time you'll just get tired of them and you'll let them go, but you want really good quality so that you have the option of doing that. You're not forced to just throw everything out every couple of years and restart. Shag rugs, not the vibe. I know some of you in the comments section are gonna say you love your shag carpets and I love that for you. A home is meant to have warmth is meant to be inviting and welcoming, okay? We love that about a home. It's not just a house, it's a home. But there is a problem with your home when you bring in office furniture that's meant for an office. Why is it in your home? It is office furniture. Do you love working so much you absolutely have to have it? Well, I love that for you and I would like to employ you maybe because if you're gonna commit your entire life to working, I, that makes a great employee. 
<laughs> but in our homes, we don't have to have office furniture from offices. We can have furniture for a home. So you want to be mindful what you're bringing in. This can look good if it's like a minimal space and you have all white with maybe like a little bit of that wood tone. You know, it's like, it's probably like a plastic veneer over some particle board, but we're not going to talk about that at the moment. You don't need it in your home because it just doesn't have the character we want for pieces in our home. And all of this tends to be in like a contemporary office cubicle style of furniture. It's it's not mixed together. It's not interesting. It's not building character into a space. And if you're going to have some of these pieces because, hey, they're built for durability, right? They're built for some, you know, like financier in some room full of people on the phones to be setting their coffee cup down on every day and dealing with paperwork on. I don't know what to tell you about that, but we don't need it in a home, but it's meant to last for a reasonably long period of time because companies don't want to be recycling furniture all of the time. It's not good for their profit margins. So yeah, the quality can be good sometimes and it can be a good interim type of furniture, but home office furniture looks like it's out of an office, but you don't necessarily want to live in the place you're working. So why would you want the place you live to look like the place you work? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I think you can infuse really cool, ultra contemporary modern design with vintage pieces, you know, contemporary design and mid-century mix in really beautifully. So if you have a lot of this home office furniture looking furniture. You can mix in some really cool pieces as you cycle through them and as you replace them. That can work for you as well, but we don't need our homes to look like office spaces because it looks like, oh, that is that your dining room or is it the employee lounge? Girl, what's the tea? And honey, we know the microwave is getting used by everybody on their lunch break. It, it's just not giving. It's not giving a home. It's not giving welcoming and inviting. It's giving like a short-term rental. It's giving an office space. It's giving a cubicle. And if that's your fantasy, I love that for you. But for me, I need my home to be warm, welcoming, inviting, comfortable, sophisticated and chic, not office building. Hey, now that we've talked about all the hideous furniture you can let go of, let's also talk about some tacky things everybody you know probably has and we all hate. Be sure you check out this video right here and I will see you over there.